Hey guys, Shane here at 3D Printing, and today we're going to do part three of the Hypercube build, which is going to be adding on the X and Y components and getting the belt run. So welcome back guys. So I'm excited. This is moving along quite well. Uh, I'm trying to put more time into this project to get it done because I really want to get this thing printing and add another printer to my army and get things done. So I did have to do a few things whenever I left you last, which is right after I put all of this uh, X and Y gantry together and it was looking great. And I'm going to show you what I changed. All right. So the first thing I changed was the actual X, Y idler setup. And the reason why I changed that is because the big, long uh, LM8 you use were super duper loud on this steel rod. And this was the old carriage right here. And here's the new carriage. As you can see, it is quite a bit longer because these are using the iGIST's RJMP0108 bearings, which are Drylin bearings that are eight millimeter the, for the uh, inside diameter in there. And these idlers are specifically made for those bearings. And it slides super duper quietly. And that's going to be awesome once we actually get some weight on here. Most of the sliding noise, if I put a little weight on it, a lot of that goes away. Sorry, you're bouncing there. So that's going to be really, really awesome because again, I want this to be a pretty quiet machine and that's going to help out. And what I also did in the meantime, is I installed all of the idlers here. Now, Tech2C was using those really, really tiny flange bearings. I think they're 622 ZZs, something like that. I didn't really see the reason why to use a sandwich set of bearings when I have these 16 uh, smooth, I, mean, I guess I forget the diameter of these ones. These are the same as the 16 tooth bearings, except they're smooth and they, you know, spin very easily and there's one in the top and one in the bottom, which is kind of hard to see, but it's uh, under here on this side because the belt goes in here, goes around to the other side, comes out and there's a belt that goes up on top as well. And those are just, I think better because I don't have to worry about those other two bearings. We'll see how they work out. I do have the 622 ZZ bearings to use instead if I decide that these don't work out as well, but Again, these were one piece I wanted to put them in. I had to use a 15 millimeter M3s with a regular old uh, M3 nut in there. It just sits right in there. Push it down in, it wasn't a problem. Uh, I reprinted these again in the MakeShaper Black Pet G. They printed out great. There's no problems there at all. And the last thing I had to change, as you can see right here, were the Y uh, steel rod mounts. I had to switch to these little ones that Tech2C did. And the main reason because is on this side, Let's see if I can spin this. All right, so the main reason I had to change that was for this side here because, because of the way that the belts go, this belt on the left side of the printer is higher. So it is actually almost, pa uh, almost parallel to this smooth rod. Where on the right side, it is below the smooth rod. And because this one has to be higher, uh, this piece right here actually goes behind the bracket that I'm gonna show you in a minute that holds the motor there. And that lets you get the motor higher. Using the other brackets, which I had these ones, yes, they are very strong and hold very well, but it gets in the way. So I would either have to A, modify this in order to be like that, or just use those for now. Okay, so these are the parts that we're gonna have to use today. And these are the motors, I've already put them together. And there is a left and right. The right one is all smooth here. There's no extra um, cutouts to that or anything. But the left motor, as you can see here, is this cutout. It's about two millimeters thick. That's how thick the that one piece I just showed you was. And that slides into here. And then I just take this, uh, this T-nut off and this bolt and then slide that right through and attach it. It shouldn't be a problem at all, but these are on nice and sturdy. I think I lined up the, these are the uh, 20 tooth pulleys, five millimeters for the, um, for the rod in there. So that's, I'm sorry, these are three millimeter to snap onto the motors or to connect to the motors. So I have the two of those done. And then here are the idler bearings in the back. Again, I use the complete uh, smooth bearings here 
which are the same size as the tooth. So I think these are four, three by fives. And it took a 40 millimeter M3 bolt with a nylock on the bottom. I wouldn't mind remixing these and embed the nylock. That way you don't need to worry about having pliers to hold that on and you don't want to pinch these too much. Pinch them enough so they're solid, but these need to be able to rotate freely. So I have the left and the right. And then here is the X carriage, which I will probably end up replacing with, I think, Arthur's version because he has embedded nuts in all of his. I just didn't have the time to reprint that yet. So I'm going to do this one for now. I might change it. This is the strap that holds down the, uh, pull the uh, pulleys. So, and this is the little strap that goes down and holds down the belts whenever we go to tighten everything up. And finally, what we're going to be using for belts is the GT2 six millimeter uh, belt and this is 10 meters. It was like four or five dollars on uh, AliExpress. It took a month to get to me but I wanted to save some money. This is exactly what we need. So let's get to putting these parts on and then we can talk about how we're going to put the belt on. Just a little reminder with these, if you look in there the bolts are behind the motor so you have to put these in first and then attach your motor. So just to keep you aware of that, otherwise you won't be able to get to them. But you can reach them with a Allen wrench or I have my little Pittsburgh screw here, uh, screwdriver, that will fit in there to get to those, but you need to put those on first. And then these, again, they're kind of drop in and then you can and turn it because you can't do both sides at once. But once that locks on, you can add another two on this side and this thing will be super duper solid. Now, in order to get this to work out, we're gonna have to lay this down and line up the T-nut down there with the hole, which of course I have a magnetic screwdriver. That's goofy. All right, so once we have the T-nut in there lined up, we can then go ahead and put the motor mount on there and get that to the hole and then get this into that T-nut. And then I'm gonna switch to an Allen wrench because actually I can't reach that one. It's hard to see. I can't reach that one back there with my screwdriver. I need to use an Allen wrench. And there's two. And you see here how the, how the belt is just above where the pull, where the smooth rod is here. So we've got to make sure that, that stays. That's why you have to have this piece like that. And this side is a lot of the same. Just get it up. And I want it to be right against the bottom of the smooth rod holder. And you can put your motors on later, I guess. I just did it first because it was easier to hold the motor when it was, you know, flat on a bench on the table to work on than being up here. So there are those now. And then now all we have to do is on the insides, so inside here and inside here is add those other, uh, the nuts inside there, the other M5 T-nuts. And just to illustrate in case anybody is curious, so you see the center there is larger so you can slip your T-nut in and then let it fall down and then you can just go ahead and tighten it down and it should twist. Sometimes I take a little bit of coaching and there that one's in. So now I can add a second one up here and make this thing super duper solid. All right, the last bit we need to do here is add on these idler brackets which will just attach right to here. Uh, I'm, you can't really get it perfect for now, I'm gonna put it like right close to there because it has to end up lining up with this bearing here. So pretty much touching will get you doggone close for now. And then you can always readjust it later because these are just two M5 T-nuts that you can loosen up and slide it down if need be. It definitely won't need to go up. If anything, it'll need to go down. And that's that one. Done, super simple. And now that all those are run, we're gonna go ahead and connect the X carriage which goes on this way and it just connects I'm gonna flip these the right way and then these just take some m3s and some lock nuts on there if you can see that i guess it's black and it doesn't really help so anyways yeah so these sit like so they point to each other and then this just goes right on there like that arthur's version has some lock nuts on it or some uh, embedded nuts in it. This version does not. So for now, we'll be okay. Well, all right, now that that's all on and we've got the carriage on there, which slides great. This slides really nice if you push here in the middle. Push either side, it doesn't work out very well uh, because it's just not how it's supposed to work. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up a drawing on how to wire the belts. I can't remember how to run the belts, I should say. I can't remember if I have to twist them or not in this in the WIS configuration. I can't remember. So I'll bring that and I'll put a link in the description below to the drawing that I end up using for this one. But I'm gonna look for that now and then we'll uh, try to film as much of it as I can so you can see it, but just use the drawing and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so I think I figured it out and screwed up at the same time. So looking online at the comments on Tech2C's video, there were several people that said that you shouldn't use smooth bearings when you're hitting the teeth. And to not do that, you flip the belts. So you twist them around so that the smooth side is hitting the smooth bearings. Well, I've just put smooth bearings in everything right now, so I would have to twist them. So what I'm gonna have to do is get out the tooth bearings, which I have the same size, just toothed, which are 16 tooth bullies. You can use 16 or 20. I've, uh, these files that I have work for both, but everyone is saying to use tooth pulleys, so idler pulleys, idlers, idler bearings. Anyways, so I'm gonna need to switch all those out, and there's two, four, six, eight of them that need to be switched out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I will come back, and I'm pretty sure I figured out how to do the uh, belts. So I'm just gonna to need to kinda of do a dry run to make sure that I have them uh, the right length. I'll cut them down, and I'll tell you roughly how long they are. All right, so I figured it out, and they all need to be toothed except for two pulleys. So I cut my cable, it's about 1.2 meters for the, the timing pulley. Now, when it comes off of the off the extruder carriage, and then it goes over the first pulley, the closest pulley to the actual um, carriage has to be a smooth one. That way, all the rest of them can be toothed. So basically, the top belt starts at the extruder, and it goes out uh, the one side, goes along the top pulley, around the motor, and then it goes back through the, the XY carriage, back to the rear idlers, it goes across to the other idlers, goes into the other side through it, and then attached to the extruder again. The bottom one does it the exact same way. So they both go the exact same way except one belt is on top, the other belt is on bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, filming that might be kind of boring, we'll see, but uh, at least I'll get that done and then see if my, where I put the smooth idlers in the right place, we'll find out. All right guys, well the belt's installed now. It was super simple once I figured out about the whole idler bearing thing. So one, it doesn't matter which side you put it on, you just have to put it on the same on each side, whether it's the, the two closest or the two furthest from the actual extruder plate, that way your, your belts are even looking. And once that's done, again, everything moves exactly the way it should. It's tight because the belts are tight. So I will be interested to see on how it actually moves once I break these belts in a little bit and once we get some power hooked up to this. And I think that'll be the next video is just actually testing out the motors just to make sure they operate the way they should on the board. And so I'll get a couple parts out, uh, maybe do like the bed, but we're definitely gonna test the motors next, but that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Uh, again, I screwed up a little bit, but you know, let me know what you have and I'll see if I can help out. I'll put a link to the other files that I used to this, so the extra XY, idlers and the other idlers back here, they're a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier than uh, Tech2C's originals. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the Hypercube and you like the way the video series is going, please give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, talk in the comments down below. If you wanna support the channel, best way to do that, subscribe. If you wanna support me financially, there's gonna be a Patreon link down below me. Donate me a dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, you guys are awesome and you're the ones that make, you literally make this project happen, so thank you very much for that. Uh, if you wanna help me out without spending some of your money, fill the links down below, update your bookmarks, do your daily shopping with all of that. 
I appreciate it. And check out some other content. The other two videos before this will be right over here. And thanks for watching, guys. So until next time, happy printing.